PTC control is really not a challenge if you have one camera, maybe two, three, four, five, six, eight cameras, no problem. What if you have a literal army of pan tilt zoom cameras? We often hear about this from people creating live programming like um, reality shows where they have like 70 cameras on a set and they need to access these cameras, maybe not at the same time, but they need the same operators to control them. The challenge is that keeping communication with 70 cameras all at the same time continuously is very hard for a controller. So most controllers, they'll need to group things up and you can do that with your Skahoy controller. So what we have developed for Panasonic here and the PDC Extreme, not that it's specific for the Extreme, but now we use this to, to demonstrate because typically a PDC Extreme would be the controller you choose to do such a um, reality show and pan tilt zoom control at the same time. We have made grouping feature. So the grouping feature means that you group cameras together in units so that camera one through eight, for instance, are um, a specific set of cameras, then you can change the group to something else. So you see it in action right here. I have only three cameras with me. So um, we, have, um, we, we have to yeah, play the game that these are a, a part of a large 70 camera show, for instance. The buttons in this row is usually used to be navigation for the menu. And I can select group one, two, and three. You see that on these buttons right there. And as I'm doing that, I'm basically reloading which cameras down here is active. When I change the group on this controller, it means that it's gonna disconnect to all cameras in that group that, that previously was selected and then reconnect to cameras that are set up in, in the group you select. So currently, just to prove the point, you can see that I have access to this robotic camera in group one, and I'm operating that. I have camera number one selected. I can press the preset button, and you see that it's, it's uh, operating presets. So that's all good. Now I'm changing to group number two. And that camera one, still selected here, will have be this camera, as you can see. And I can operate it with a joystick, of course. And now I go to group number three. And with camera number one selected still, I have access to the UE150 camera here and could also recall preset on that one. So how did we set this up? We did it by configuration. This is gonna be a little hairy in terms of the configuration complexity. So um, I suggest that you go to the, um, um, the website uh, at Skahoy and um, in the support section over here, on the manuals, you find Panasonic PTC actions. This opens a PDF file downloaded from our GitHub repository that will explain everything you need to know about setting up Panasonic cameras with our controllers. One of them is camera groups. So you see camera groups I explained here. You need to do something by configuration of a text string. So I have my PTC Extreme connected to my Skahoy firmware application and um, therefore I can go to online configuration by pressing this button. It will now open a web page with the configuration for this controller and I need to go to the manage media tab. In this, you see that this kind of string that was explained in the manual, let's just go back to the manual and see it right here. This kind of string is apparently used for configuring the PTC Extreme right now. If you look at it for a while, it should be kind of clear that each square bracket contains the IP addresses of the cameras in that group. So a square bracket is a group, then you can have a number of groups, group one, two, and three, and inside of each you have IP addresses for the cameras in that group. I wanna try something. I wanna take, um, to, uh, place, let's say the UE150 inside the first group as well. Now, you could easily imagine that you actually wanted one camera to appear in several groups because the, the groupings might, I don't know how these will be logical. For a, a Big Brother show, it might be the rooms they are located in, or um, it, it could be some other grouping that you prefer for your cameras. But in this case, I'm now gonna add a second IP address to the first group so that we should see a second button light up for camera selection. I'm saving the settings. I now need to go back 
to the firmware application, press check for updates, because the consequence of doing changes in the online configuration is that you need to regenerate the firmware so these settings get into the controller. It would be exactly the same if you added new device cores, so the PTC Extreme would talk to a switcher or router, because that's also typically what you want to do when you um, have camera selector buttons. You, you want them to select the source up on the screen in front of you for um, the, the operator's convenience. We are currently waiting for the server to generate the firmware, so when it's done, we can continue the video. And we're now concluding the update of firmware for the PTC Extreme. So the next thing we'll see is the PTC Extreme is rebooting uh, while it's doing that. Let's just open up the serial monitor and see what is announced here. There might be information about how the groups are set up, which could be useful for validation. So it's requesting DHCP address. And there we go. Um, yeah, let's disable auto scroll. You can see group number one are these two IP addresses, group number two this one, and group three this one. I would also, um, yeah, so obviously it seems like it's, it's actually working as we expect. Now let's take a look at group number one, which is currently selected. And it seems that we can confirm that if we select camera number one, we have access to camera number one right there. If I am changing over to camera number two, yes. We have the UE150 there. If I go to group number three, camera number one is going to be the UE150 because that was still assigned to be the first camera in that group. Isn't that beautiful? This is how you manage large amounts of PTC cameras, logically grouping them. The controller even has parameters that it will allow you to optimize further the change speed because it's all about the speed of keeping a continuous connection to these cameras. We have ways so you can set up a PDC operators console so it really quickly changes between the groups without any significant delay to, to his um, uh, his concern would be being ready to control the cameras because when you change the group there is like a, a, a load time of some sort but that could be tens of seconds but we have brought it down to really a few seconds uh, or maybe not even a second. Um, what I want to say is that we have ways to configure the controller so you can do this really quickly, but you can also prioritize the controller to query the cameras for more settings that exist in the cameras, like iris, shutter speed, and all these things that a shading console may want to access, which are not as pressed for time as the PTC operator. So uh, look into the manual, ask us if you need details about this. Uh, we have optimized this configuration with the Panasonic Pentel Zoom cameras to be really effi efficient for um, these types of, of production that require a large amount of PTC cameras. <music>